We will call the Board of Mayor Alderman meeting together for Tuesday, October the 8th. The um, <clears throat> first order of business is that we'll have the opening prayer by Elliot Henhaus, Linhaus of Bartlett Baptist Church. Pastor, if you're in the crowd, please come forward. And seeing no one come forward, I'll ask uh, Vice Mayor Jack Young to say the prayer. If you'd stand for the prayer and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance, we'd appreciate it. Pray with me, please. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this beautiful weather you're giving us. God, I want to lift up those that are just gone through a horrible hurricane and appears they're about to go through another one, that you would just protect those people, uh, watch over them, get them to safety. God, I thank you for the opportunities that you give us to provide services for those people. And I just pray, Lord, that uh, no one is injured and in, in this catastrophe that's on its way. Lord, I also want to lift up our, our friend, um, Charlie Goforth, who is going to undergo surgery tomorrow. I pray that you're with the doctors and those that are caring for him, be with his family, keep them comforted. Lord, I also pray that you protect all those who place themselves in harm's way for our benefit, and I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Madam Clerk, will you read the future meetings into the record? Bartlett Arts Council, October 16th at 6 p.m. Bartlett Performing Arts and Conference Center Advisory Board, our October 16th at 6 p.m. Board of Zoning Appeals, October 17th at 6.30 p.m. Historic Preservation Commission, October 21st at 6.30 p.m. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We'll move to recognitions at this time. Is there uh, any scouts present in the room? Is uh, I'd ask is Reagan Gilmore in the room? He's asking if I think they're outside the door. Well, we're, it's can somebody see if, see if he's out there? And if not, we'll uh, till they find that out, we'll move to the approval of minutes. So, Madam Clerk, will you read item number one, the minutes of September 24th, 2024 Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting? If you hadn't seen any corrections, omissions, or errors. Chair would entertain a motion to approve. Moving approved. Second. With property motion to second. Any discussion? Hearing none. Madam Clerk, will you place it? Place the roll before the alderman, please. <clears throat> Minutes are accepted unanimously. At this time. I'd like to call uh, Reagan Gilmore down and his troop leader and family if they want to come down. And uh, tonight we'd like to say congratulations to tonight we'd like to say congratulations to to uh, Reagan Gilmer for earning the rank of Eagle Scout. It's a lot of time and effort goes into achieving this. Thank you, Ed. Into achieving this award, and you certainly and you certainly deserve uh, accommodation for your for your perseverance in getting this. It's quite an honor to bestow to obtain the rank of an Eagle Scout. I'm sure you will be accomplish some great things in your future, as well as continue to uphold the ideas of the scouting throughout the years. We just really want to congratulate you tonight. Is there any anyone in the crowd that's an Eagle Scout? Got one, Ted? And is there any? In, anyway, so... I got the second class. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Reagan, tonight... We want to present you with this certificate of congratulations on obtaining the rank of Eagle Scout as a member of Troop 27. And uh, we just want to acknowledge your accomplishment and your commitment to upholding those principles of scouting. And uh, you've established yourself as a leader, displaying the strength 
the character and the respect for your community and our country. You set the course for success throughout your life. And again, we want to congratulate you and wish you the very best in all your endeavors. Please give a hand to Reagan. You the scout leader, uh, the troop leader? I'm one of them, and I'm his father. You want to like say anything? He has a barber. Yeah. Not a lot. Um, I just want to thank all of y'all, uh, Mayor and Alderman, for uh, allowing us to come and, and recognize him. And, and uh, we've been here before, and it's not unique uh, in one sense. Um, it's, it makes us proud uh, as leaders to see um, our community leaders um, recognize the importance of scouting. And... Um, um, uh, one of the big things before you become Eagle um, is you have to have an e do an Eagle project. And one of the things I was really proud of is from almost the day that he, what we call crossover, which is going from Cub Scouts to Boy Scouts, which is in um, the fifth grade, um, um, he wanted to make improvements to the outdoor classroom at his middle school. And Personally, the last thing I wanted to do after I got out of middle school was go back to it. So, um, but he went back and made some great improvements to the outdoor classroom there, um, and really used a lot of the skills that he that he learned um, in helping construct and finding people who uh, know how to do things right, which in, included contacting both of his grandparents or both of his grandparents' uh, fathers uh, in order to get that done. So. Um, and then getting support. Um, he's lucky enough that he's got all four grandparents here um, uh, supporting him. Um, and uh, so they're the front row right up here. So, um, uh, and they've, they've been just very, very supportive of all of us in getting this done. So congratulations, Reagan. Thank you all. Are you working on a bed? Are you just here? He's just here as a friend. Okay, okay, good. Then. If he was, we want to recognize him. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Okay, Madam Clerk, uh, we move to consent agenda. We'll have two items on there. Is there any of those two items that any board member would like to remove for separate discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, we read item one and two into the record, please. Item one, special event permit for Memphis Classic Chevy Club Fall Car Show. Item two, purchase two 2025 Chevrolet Trailblazer LS police vehicles. Okay, they've been presented to the board. Move we approve. Second that. And been properly motioned and been properly second. Madam Clerk, will you place the roll before the Alderman? Consent agenda is approved. And now we move to new business. Madam Clerk, will you read item number one under new business into the record? Resolution 35-24, resolution to amend the fiscal year 2025 Bartlett City General Purpose School Fund and Education Capital Project Fund. Mr. Dick Phoebus, Director of Finance, for an explanation. This comes to us from the school department. Uh, they're using uh, $40,000 of their fund balance to uh, do some repairs at Ellendale Walkways. Will be approved. Approved. Properly motioned. Second. And properly second. Any discussion on resolution 3524? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, please present resolution 3524 to the board for a vote. <clears throat> it also carries a very short agenda tonight. Uh, Madam Clerk, we're going to move to open discussion. And as we move to open discussion, uh, is anything from the board, any member of the board have anything they wish to, to share? I do want to say <clears throat> thank you to 
uh, Debbie and Todd and our parks and everybody that made uh, the fall festival. It was very warm but very successful. And uh, I heard nothing but good comments about what a good time folks have. And um, so we're thankful and appreciative for all the hard work that our city workers have done to make that a successful event. Now we move to directors. Does any director have anything they wish to share? Chief Tommy Gately. Good evening, Mayor and Board. Uh, just a reminder, October 19th is the 42nd annual uh, Bartlett Fire Department Pancake Breakfast. Uh, adults, tickets are $6. Uh, kids are 4 It's from 7 to 11 at the venue, uh, 5868 Stage Road. Uh, there's activities for adults as well as children. Uh, come on out, have a good time. Uh, it's a great time for fellowship and to uh, interact with your community. So uh, tickets can be purchased uh, by Venmo or online. Uh, look us up on Facebook. But we, we hope to see everybody there. Thank you. Chief, all the proceeds are going where? Uh, we divide them up uh, through a couple different charities. Uh, the Dream Factory is one of them. Uh, we also feed uh, one of the homes at St. Jude through the Ronald McDonald House. Uh, we did West Cancer this year, and then we also did Baptist Cancer. So they're divided up uh, kind of equally uh, throughout, uh, but a lot of times we try to touch the charities that touch the, the fire service, mm -hmm. families specifically. So come get you a, a big stack of pancakes and all of our dollar goes to the a good cause. The fellowship is healthy, but we can't say <laughs> Good times. So, so thank you, Chief. Thank you. And uh, Madam Clerk, will you read the discussion form into the record? If a citizen completed the open discussion citizen form prior to the start of the meeting, they may come forward and state their name and address for the record. The citizen will have up to three minutes, at which time a buzzer will sound, and they must sit down. The total time limit for the open discussion period is 20 minutes, and I will call the first name. Stephen Kerrigan, 7008 8th Road. My name is Stephen Kerrigan, 7008 8th Road. Um, thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, I'd like to address uh, fluorination in the water, of Bartlett water supply, um, seeing if we could maybe look at um, removing it from our water supply in, in addition. Uh, the, the stuff that we do add, I understand that there is natural fluoride that resides in some of the water that we get from the ground naturally. Um, and I, I want to start by saying, even before all that, um, but I, I do, I so appreciate having our own water supply in Bartlett. It's always been great. I've all, all the water reports have been outstanding, and I'm reminded every time that another um, city or municipality they have a, a power outage or some kind of event, then we're reminded that we have pristine water here in Bartlett, unlike many other, um, including Memphis and Lakeland Arlington, those places. So, um, but there's been there have been some. On that topic, there have been some recent um, court cases that have gone on at the federal level, um, proving that at certain levels, not not at Bartlett level, levels, but at a bit higher levels, it affects IQ in children. Um, I have two young daughters myself. Um, at our house, we do we do reverse osmosis our drinking water. However, the water that we shower in and use in the yard, none of that's filtered uh, independently. Um, and my daughter, my six-year-old, she goes to the public school here, and so she just drinks the water, whatever is available there. So I'm just trying to advocate for m maybe considering removing it or, or just opening a discussion about that in the future. Um, and I, I'm not sure. I, I tried to call today to speak with somebody at the water department. They were unavailable, but um, I should be able to talk to them Thursday, maybe further about that, and see if there is a is an opportunity. There, just from this court case alone, there have been at least five Bartlett-sized or larger cities that have decided to just go ahead and remove it from their water supply. Right? I know it's an argument from the American Dental Association and maybe some other organizations that it's good to have fluoride in the water. I would argue that it's not doing much if we're just drinking it. It's passed. Sure, it maybe touches our teeth for a moment, but it passes through. And for the most part, anybody can go buy fluoride toothpaste, right? And in a lot of cases, it's actually cheaper than an all-natural toothpaste that doesn't have fluoride. So I don't know if the economic argument would be there for that, but I think it would possibly save Bartlett some money and um, not having to add that to our, our pristine drinking water as it is so all right thank you thank you or do y'all have anything i mean 
What, no, what uh, could just, I do? What could I do next to uh, maybe next steps? Does anybody uh, have any recommendations? Um, Thursday, uh, Mr. Horn will be back in town. He can talk with you. I'll just tell you this: that I think Alderman Young and I both can attest to that. That's been a conversation that's been going on many, many, many years. Mm. We've listened every time, and we've reduced our levels down we're below the federal standards now but we're always open to listening we're always thinking new data comes out mr horn is the right man to talk to about that and so you have a discussion with him and we'll take that under consideration okay. thank you Mayor. thank you next is marva malone 6819 old brownsville road Good evening. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I'm on here representing my neighbor. She wasn't able to make it. Her name is Doris Willis. And she lives at the corner of, she lives at that three-way stop sign that is Billy Moore and Old Brownsville. Her, dri her driveway is right there at that stop sign. Uh, even though she has a hard time getting out, her main concern right now is that there are people who are at nighttime running into her yard, almost hitting her car, and they're, uh, it's like they're ignoring the, the three-way stop sign. And she said she will appreciate if there be a light there or something that will stop them from doing that because uh, her children can be in the yard playing and, you know, they can run up into her yard. So uh, she's asking for help at this time. Good. We'll, uh, we'll uh, I'll get with uh, Chief Cox and we see what we can do. The funds just simply wasn't there to put a light in. Okay. But we can get with our police department and the folks are running stop signs or not stopping at the stop signs. We can certainly address that. Okay. All right. Uh, one more thing. Yes, ma'am. Uh, young man, you said that uh, you were distributing among different charities. You left out La Bonner. Uh, the reason I'm particular about La Bonner is because my grandchild, Nolan Malone, his life was saved by La Bonner. He got sick all of a sudden, and he he felt he was going to die. Well, he would he would have died because his whole liver just mm -hmm. quit on him. He was 17 years old on the Mumford uh, band and marching band. And now he can't do that anymore. Well, certainly they've helped a bunch of people. Yes. And uh, I'm, I know the chief is listening to you, and he'll take that into consideration, and he'd love to talk to you afterwards. All right. Thank you. And thank you for listening. Yes, ma'am. Anyone else wish to come forward? That's all the forms I have. Seeing no one else coming forward wishing to be recognized to speak, Chair, to entertain a motion to, to uh, adjourn. No, ma'am, if you have something to say, please come forward. <laughs> Hi, I'm Charlotte Potter. I live on Berry Crest. And we have had quite a few feral cats. Our neighborhood is full of them. Bartlett Animal Shelter has been wonderful. They've brought traps out. Um, but what I needed to know, I did find out there's someone in our neighborhood that she gets cats, she has them fixed, but she's releasing them, and she's feeding them. She keeps a bowl of cat food on her porch, and then she's got a little cat house. Okay, I've had dogs, I've had animals, but I keep them in my yard. I'm now raising a rabbit that I caught running down Germantown Parkway two years ago. He now has my patio to live in. But the cats are all over the place. The lady behind me has cerebral palsy. She, we take her garbage to the street. We do a lot of things for her. She has an indoor cat that never gets out. But these cats are standing outside in her driveway agitating her cats. They're using my flower beds. I love flowers. I'm out in my yard all the time. There's people that are leaving their garage door on my street open like this with food and water for the animals. It is not the animal's fault. 
is human beings. I am not going to harm an animal, but is there something that we could do as the city of... I mean, I, I was told years ago that there's no law about cats. Your dogs are not supposed to run loose. We have that problem, too. We have a guy that rides his bike, and his dog runs through everybody's yard, <clears throat> leaving debris behind. Um, but is there something that can be done about all the feral cats? I mean, Bartlett Animal Shelter told me today that our neighborhood has probably more than anybody's. So, ma'am, yes, ma'am, there's something we can do. But uh, the current policy is they're releasing the feral cats. Mm -hmm. And they thought if we, when the feral, when a cat is brought to the animal shelter, is neutered, then put back out. Mm -hmm. And I understand that puts a burden on some of those other folks mm -hmm. that don't have cats. So now you have a loose cat running around that belongs to nobody. Well, and you're finding them hit by cars. Yes, ma'am. They're in okay. the street. My neighbor found a little kitten like this yesterday. Little green stuff all in its eyes running down the street. She took it to the Barbell Animal Shelter. So, but when you start feeding that cat, it becomes your it becomes your cat. That's so, so if you're uh, feeding and watering them, they become yours. Yes, ma'am. And so, I just want you to know we're looking at that policy real hard all right. Thank and you very uh, much. taking that consideration because uh, we understand what you're saying. Okay, I appreciate right. it. Thank, Thank you, you. Mr. Mayor. I know. When when we uh, when we had the night out the other night, particularly on the Ingleside Drive, and I gave this to Mr. Stones, there's a complaint about r roof rats, rats over in that side of town too. So I don't know if that's also influencing the amount of cats that are over there mm -hmm. with all them rats and mice. I don't know why, but I know that we're going to take a. <laughs> so I don't know if that's all connected or not, but I do know that there. I know there's some investigation going on for that as well. So good deal. Anyone else wish to come forward? Yes, Mr. Gilmer. Please come to the microphone station and address for the record. Uh, Kelly Gilmer, 4285 Lark Valley Lane. Um, since I'm here as a scout leader, um, I wanted to take the opportunity to let y'all know, um, it, you know, I used my sons as, as, an ex as an example. He was able to um, make improvements to uh, that outdoor classroom, um, which is owned by Shelby County or not Shelby County, Bartlett City Schools, um, at no cost to the taxpayers. I was expecting applause. Okay. Um, there's other projects. I've seen projects as large as building a literal, a, a pretty large bridge um, out at Davies Plantation. Um, there's a um, um, gazebo out at Shelby Farms that was part of a uh, an Eagle project, all the way down to... Uh, and a, Maybe not all the way down, but including um, a good friend of mine's son um, raised money to um, outfit a uh, canine um, with a, a bulletproof vest. Um, if there are projects like this, if if we had access, accessibility to a list of here's the things we want to do as the city and it could be just the next thing that taxpayers pay for, but it also could be something that an Eagle Scout or um, um, another organization, whatever it might be, um, could take on and say, you know what, let's not have taxpayers do that. Let's do that. Let's let's be the one who, you know, plants these trees or um, cleans this park or um, anything like that. So. Very good idea, Mr. Gilmer. Thank you for bringing that up. Some instances, in all instances, we some instances we can, some we can't, cause insurance purposes. But uh, uh, Mr. Paul Wright, would you raise your hand? If you'll see that young man right there, he's our parks director, and I'm sure he could always use a helping hand with something. Okay. So, and if they don't let you know, just let me know, and I'll find somebody else that needs a helping hand. Does <laughs> <laughs> anyone else wish to come forward? So, uh, do we have a motion? I can't remember now. We had a motion and a second. So we call this meeting adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>